Growing up, I was a pretty big fan of comics. Some of my fondest childhood memories take place in my old local library, where I hung around the YA graphic novel section and spent a great afternoon just reading the comics they offered me. One hero I fell down an obsessive hole of was Spider-Man. Talk about a colorful superhero surrounded by colorful villains and a bunch of interesting plots. So many iconic villains came out of the Spider-Man comics, but there was one that stands out in the crowd to me. Venom. Ever since his first appearance, he has proven to be one of Spidey's most dangerous and feared foes. The background of Venom is so deep, and believe me, that is the best way I can possibly put it, and is an understatement. When most people think of Venom, they think of Eddie Brock, right? He's the most popular host of the Venom symbiote. You want to know who else got to be Venom in the comics? Try fucking everybody. There's a pretty good chance your favorite Marvel character was Venom at one point, and some variation. That's how common it is for the symbiote to be passed along, and with so many versions of Venom out there, you're bound to have some terrifying and very weird renditions that go beyond the Venom we know and love. Some of them you dread the very concept of. And today, I want to cover some of these terrifying and bizarre ideas. So without further ado, I'm just gonna jump right into it. We're gonna start off mildly with this one. One of Venom's many hosts across the Marvel comics was actually Wilson Fisk, aka Kingpin. But not exactly the Kingpin we're familiar with. Or should I say, Earth-616's Kingpin. God, these infinite Earths piss me off. No, this one takes place on Earth-TRN-421 a world explored briefly in the Marvel's 100th Anniversary Special Series. It's not really 100 years old, the series takes place in the future. Not a lot is covered in this Earth synopsis from what I could find, but one thing is for sure, Kingpin gets a good old dose of Venom. On this Earth, the Venom symbiote has a lot of similar attributes as Earth-616's, with the addition of being able to pass along through technology in this case. The experiments with the Venom symbiote were funded by Kingpin, and at one point he used Eddie Brock as one of the test subjects and had him fight, who else? Peter Parker. At one point, Kingpin kills Eddie in cold blood and takes the symbiote for himself, creating a huge Venom blob monster that really is terrifying, given that Kingpin is already a behemoth of a human being, and now is even larger and more powerful because of Venom. Kingpin Venom tries to kill Parker as well, but the wall crawler manages to lead the fight into the woods, where Peter thankfully manages to separate him from the symbiote, and creates a nice cozy after battle campfire with it, putting an end to its reign. Next up, let's hop on over to Earth 1610, or as you might know it better, the Ultimate Universe. While Eddie Brock still managed to be the first host of Venom in this universe, a new one sparked when Miles Morales took on the role of Spider-Man. During this time, everyone was searching for this new Spidey's identity, two of them including Betty Brant and Dr. Conrad Marcus, who helped create the spider that bit Miles. Just as Betty was getting a lead on the new Spidey, she ended up dead at the hands of Marcus, and he went and stole a sample of the Venom symbiote to go hunt down who he believed to be the new Spider-Man, Jefferson Davis. Yup, Miles' dad. Naturally, this new, terrifying Venom got into a fight with the new Spider-Man, and at one point, he was eaten by him. Yeah, fucking scary. Thankfully, he managed to break out of his chest, Jesus. And Marcus was shot dead upon the police's arrival, putting a quick end to this terrifying xenomorph-looking thing. Now that we've covered that, why don't we talk about the time the Guardians of the Galaxy had a game of hot potato with the Venom symbiote. It all started in Volume 3, Number 21 of the Guardian series, the start of the Planet of the Symbiotes trilogy, where at this point, the host of the symbiote is once-friendly neighborhood bully Flash Thompson. After going on a brief killing spree, he is tracked down by the Guardians on Nowhere, and together they manage to separate Flash from the symbiote successfully. They take it back to their ship to discuss what to do with it, and wouldn't you know it, it breaks free, and latches itself onto Groot of all Guardians. And thus we get this priceless panel of him proclaiming, I am Venom, which is just gold. Groot Venom starts wreaking havoc on the ship and sends it into an asteroid field as a result. Drax manages to get the symbiote off of Groot, and it makes a quick escape from the team. When most of the teammates go to search for it, the symbiote manages to get a hold of Rocket next, who then holds Drax and Groot at gunpoint, demanding control of the ship. He opens fire, claiming he's <laughs> tired of Groot's speech. You can't make this shit up. And the Guardians battle him. Just when it seems that Venom Rocket just might maroon the Guardians, Drax grabs him and the symbiote transfers to him. 
Venom Drax does manage to take control of the ship and lands them in the planet of the symbiotes, where they come across their lost teammate Flash Thompson again. Oh yeah, did I mention Flash was a member of the Guardians of the Galaxy? Yeah, Eugene got around a lot in the comics. Anyways, they find that the hostless symbiotes of this planet are actually not hostile at all, and the Guardians even allow themselves to bond with them temporarily because of this. It's here they learn the true intentions of Clintar. For those of you who don't know, that's what the alien's name really is. And as it turns out, it's only the renegade species that cause chaos when latching onto a host and goes after vulnerable humans like Eddie Brock or ill-intentioned ones like Matt Gargan. It really gives you a new outlook of the symbiote, and the horrifying Planet of the Symbiotes trilogy ends on a good note, with Flash being crowned a safe symbiote host and a warrior of the cosmos. Flash Thompson? And Star-Lord becomes president of the Spartax, so yeah, as chaotic as it could get. Just about every version of the Venom Guardians were horrifying, but a very happy ending. Now, before we get into more obscure versions of Venom, let's talk about probably the second most popular wearer of the symbiote, Mac Gargan. Just look at him. The fact his eyes are more realistic and just, ugh, truly a scarier face than the classic Venom, in my honest opinion. And Gargan's transition from Scorpion to Venom is quite the interesting one. It all started when Norman Osborn discovered Spider-Man's true identity and wanted his Aunt May captured in case something happened to himself. He decided to hire Scorpion for the job. On his way, he stumbled across the freed Venom symbiote, who was in desperate need to bond with a host who shared a hatred for Spider-Man and was an experienced criminal. So what do you think it did? Yeah, it bonded with Scorpion, and Gargan became the new Venom. He soon found himself teamed up with the Sinister Twelve. I won't go into all the members because holy crap. But it was led temporarily by Gargan while Osborn was still in prison. The large group went after both Spider-Man and Black Cat, only to be thwarted along with the help of a few Avengers and the Fantastic Four. Just shows that it can be done, Disney! Anyways, after a brutal and cartoonishly over-the-top battle between Spidey and the Goblin, the entirety of the Sinister Twelve was subdued, and Gargan, in quite the funny and ironic twist, ended up in the same cell Norman was in. Now, for this Venom, we're going to travel over to Earth-22249. There's a mouthful, huh? Let's call it by its simpler name, Venomverse. A very short-lived departure to another Earth, seeing as how Venomverse War Stories had only a couple of issues in 2017. But interestingly enough, it seems to take place in a world where, well, everyone is Venom. That's pretty much the concept. In this world, Venom Strange and Captain Venom, yeah, Captain Venom, as in the Venom version of Captain America, y you get it, you get it, are in the midst of their Venom resistance being wiped out by an alien race known as the Poisons. In a desperate attempt to survive, Strange decides it is time to search the infinite universes for potential Venom symbiote hosts to fight back. Many scary Venom heroes and villains came as a result, but the scariest one to me that I managed to find was none other than Doctor Doom's version. A giant, slimy, robot monster of a villain. And given how powerful and diabolical Doctor Doom already was, that's sure to send a chill down your spine. You would think this would result in a ravenous killing machine, but despite how intimidating this looks, Doom actually managed to control the symbiote and refused the urge it gave him to devour his world's Avengers, instead making a peace treaty with them. And this all happened before he traveled to Venomverse to help in Strange's resistance. So, as it turns out, a very level-headed Venom. But still, I would keep my distance. Now, you cannot have a Venom list without bringing up Venom 2099. You simply can't. So, we're gonna venture to Earth 928 now. Or, you can just call it the 2099-verse, like I do. Easily more terrifying than Earth 616's, once again, even to the point of new abilities, such as Acid Spit and allowing its host to molecularly bond with it in order to have its abilities without the need of it even being on them. The host of this one is Crone Stone, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, the older half-brother of Miguel O'Hara, aka Spider-Man 2099. Crone enjoyed bringing pain to his young sibling to the point where Miguel thought of killing Crone at one point and you thought your sibling fight over the TV was bad. Crow naturally became quite the murdering psycho as he grew up, and went after the Gallows family, which backfired when the family fatally wounded him, and left him in the sewers to die. But he ended up being saved by none other than a mutated symbiote, making him the venom of his timeline. 
His first course of action was to continuously torment Miguel by going after the ones he loves. Typical villain agenda. Probably the worst case of this is when he managed to murder his ex. Spidey eventually manages to stop Venom with the help of the town's sonic speakers. Crone remained in prison, but the symbiote eventually did escape, where it attached to Roman the Submariner, who vanished with it into the ocean. So, who knows? It just might emerge in their future. Pray it doesn't reunite with Crazy Crone. Now we're going to focus on the Old Man Logan comics. You may know this as the inspiration for the movie Logan, which was unbelievably outstanding, but clearly it had to leave out a lot. One of those things was the fact that everything was run by villains, from Doctor Doom to Red Skull. Also the part about the X-Men are dead because Logan himself killed them, thanks to Mysterio's illusions. Didn't really go into that in the movie, other than the words, they're gone now, but I wonder if they were hinting at that plot point? I don't know, just a theory. At one point while reminiscing about the traumatic event, and how it drove Logan suicidal, he and Hawkeye are both chased down by a T-Rex with the Venom symbiote on it. Yeah, you heard me 100% correct. A T-Rex Venom. You can't get any crazier than that. I mean, a more humanoid Venom is in the arc for a small amount of time, its host being a surviving member of the Madrix gang, but so is a T-Rex Venom. It chases Old Man Logan and Hawkeye around until Emma Frost sends in Black Bolt to stop him, and then the symbiote and T-Rex appear to both be killed. And then that's it. Venom's appearance in Old Man Logan. Oh, and guess what Black Bolt did to stop T-Rex Venom? Stop. Now, lastly, what if I told you that in the main Marvel Universe, Earth-616, Red Hulk, not only became Red Hulk Venom, but Red Hulk Ghost Rider Venom. I'm going to give you some time to digest that. Yes, I am not talking out of my ass. I am not trying to piss out a fanfic I've been working on. This is very real. It takes place in the Venom series of comics as part of the Circle of Four arc. Four characters come together, including Flash Thompson's Venom, X-23, Ghost Rider, and Red Hulk. Together they are trying to stop Blackheart from bringing Hell on Earth essentially, each having their own reasons for temporarily teaming up. The four ended up being killed and brought to Mephisto, who offers them a new chance at life if they are able to defeat his son. At this point, Blackheart managed to trap the Spirit of Vengeance, and they made a goal to return it to Johnny Blaze, so he could become the Ghost Rider again and ensure their victory. During their battle with Blackheart, they managed to snatch away the Spirit of Vengeance, but Venom and Red Hulk are flung away by the powerful Hellspawn. In a desperate act, Flash ends up giving both the Symbiote and the Spirit of Vengeance to Red Hulk, which combines to create the Circle of Four, or as I mentioned, Red Hulk Ghost Rider Venom. Needless to say, Blackheart had his demon ass handed to him on a silver platter, followed by them managing to return Hell to its rightful place, and the upgrades given to Red Hulk to be returned to their rightful owners. And that wraps up my list, everyone. I hope you were entertained by these freaky renditions of your favorite symbiotic villain, as well as getting a glimpse of why the comics will always be better than the movies. Anyways, I do hope you all enjoyed. I look forward to doing future videos like this. Perhaps I'll cover more characters with scary and freaky renditions. If you have suggestions, let me know. You can check out my various other content on my channel if you'd like, and hit subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter or on my Facebook page for updates and interaction. Links down below. And if you'd like to help me with some financial upgrades and improvements to the channel, I also have a Patreon. I have rewards there for people who graciously donate, including exclusives. And yeah, I will see you next time. Stay your awesome selves.